Hi, I'm Casey Kaliba, one of the fight directors here at the Folger Shakespeare Library, and today we're going to teach you how to do an Elizabethan sword fight in 10 easy steps. And I'm going to be helped today by Jonathan Rubin and Megan Reichelt. Now we can't celebrate Shakespeare's birthday in person like we would want to. So we're gonna to try to give you an activity that you can do at home. Now when Shakespeare was stuck at home during the plague, he managed to write King Lear. On the other hand, he didn't have to spend the entire day trying to explain to all of his actors how to unmute their microphones on a video teleconference. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure that whatever you're using as a sword is safe. I know we've all been cooped up for a little while, but now is not the time to take it out on anyone. When King Lear was stuck inside with his daughter, she ended up kicking him out, he went mad in a field, and it ended up badly for everyone. Now, in Shakespeare's time, they would have used metal swords, like this. But you can use anything you want around the house that's safe. If you're going to be doing these fights at home, you want to make sure that you're putting them together in a safe space. Now on stage, actors who are doing fight scenes have to worry about the audience, they have to worry about hitting the set, they've got to worry about scenic pieces, other actors. In Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, there are two fights back to back. Tybalt has to fight Mercutio, and then Tybalt has to fight Romeo. And while those two fights are happening, the actor playing Benvolio has to stand on stage the entire time, avoiding both of the fights. So a stab is very straightforward. You pull it back, you send it forward. The target is going to be dead center belly button. The first parry we're going to learn is called a bell clanger. And it's called a bell clanger because they used to have swords like this, with a bell guard that makes a really neat sound when you ding it. So to do a bell clanger, the attacker is still going to come for the belly button. The defender is going to basically look at their wristwatch and bring the sword across their waist from left to right or right to left. Bell clangers are really useful if you need to get the actors across the stage or across the castle battlement. The next parry we're going to learn is called the actor's parry, which is just a big circular motion that blocks your opponent's blade. The actor's parry is a great loopable sequence. You can go back and forth and build this as you travel or as you stay still. You also want to make sure that as the sword is coming towards you, you're actually avoiding it to make it look like your character doesn't want to die. Now that we know the first two parries, we can actually start to put them together to build different patterns. So we're going to do an actor's parry, two bell clangers, and an actor's parry. So the next technique that we're going to learn are called high lows. Now these are deceptively simple, and it's what most people do when you give them a stick. They'll just go whack, 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 whack with someone else. We're going to make it a little more complicated and a little more deceptive. Now these start simply with the blades meeting low, and they're going to go up and meet high. That's it. It's a high low. So here is how we're going to take that simple high-low sequence and make it more dynamic and more interesting. The first thing we're going to do is just start with the static shape, back and forth. Now what we're going to do is get much more of a body lean, so we're getting that sense of danger each time we do a cut. 
The next thing we can do is take this exact same simple sequence and travel with it. Now the last thing we're going to do is take the exact same simple sequence where the blades are simply going high and low and we're going to have the two performers rotate. This is exactly what they do in certain pirate movies where they have certain fights on beaches. So, so far we've learned three very simple parries. We've learned an actor's parry, a bell clanger, and high lows but we can already put them together into some pretty complicated choreography, like this. So we've had a lot of clanging, and I think it's time for a rhythm change. So what we're going to look at next is a bind. That's where I'm going to take Megan's blade and in a circular motion, put it on the other side of the body. A bind is really useful if you want to get a nice rhythm change, or you want a different sound, or if you want a little bit of more movement of the actors on the stage. The next move we're going to do is called a slash, which is a big swiping movement that doesn't make contact. Slashes are usually on a diagonal, and you want to make sure you're leaning away from the attack. We can slash the feet and jump. We can slash the belly and avoid and we can slash the head and duck. So the next technique that we're gonna learn is called the core a core. It comes from the French meaning body to body. You have seen this in every single movie, every single comic book, every single cartoon, and every single play. It's a really exciting way to get two characters really tight for an emotionally intense moment. Now you can get into a core a core from any of the techniques that we've covered so far. So you can do it out of a bell clanger. You can do it out of an actor's parry. And you can do it out of those high lows. Easy enough. Now, a core a core is a real martial technique, and it shows up in lots of different sword systems all over the world. But on some level, the way we use it on stage and on screen doesn't make a lot of sense, because when the blades come together, you've actually just created a pivot point, and the other person can use that as a fulcrum to just hit you. So the next time you see this in a movie or a TV show, don't think too much about it. When we're doing wounds, we want to make sure that we don't actually hurt our fellow actors. And there are two kinds of wounds that tend to show up in Shakespeare. The first is the kind of injury you see in Hamlet, where there's a cut to someone's arm and a little bit of poison is delivered. This is a place cut. All we have to do here is get the blade in motion, lay it gently on partner's limb, and away we go. The next wound we're going to do is a stab. So much like at the beginning, I am going to piston back and thrust towards my partner. But this time, I am not going to thrust towards his center. I am going to thrust off to the side and lightly place it on the side of his tummy. I'm going to then grab the sword tip with my hand and move it to center. From the audience's perspective, it'll look like it went straight in. <laughs> So we've looked at a lot of different pieces that you can put together to build a fight on stage. We're gonna put all of the pieces that we look together into a single fight to see what an Elizabethan fight might look like on stage. Stab. Andrew's parry. Stab. Bell clanger. Slash. Avoid. 
High. Low. High. Low. Bind. Bind. Slash. Duck. Slash. Jump. Step. Bell clanger. Cora core. Now here is the exact same fight using steel swords, just like we would do at the Folger. Step. Actress Harry. Step. Bell clanger. Slash. Void. High. Low. High. Low. Bind. Bind. Slash. Duck. Slash. Jump. Step. Bell clanger. Core core. Thank you for watching, and I hope you got something out of this video. If nothing else, I hope you learned a little bit about what the actors go through when they're putting a fight scene together here at the Folger Theater. Now, we've been filming tonight at Roundhouse Theater's rehearsal spaces, and the next time we all see each other, the Folger Theater and Roundhouse Theater are going to collaborate on a production of William Shakespeare's The Tempest. So I hope to see you when we all have a chance to come out of our homes. Best wishes and happy birthday to William Shakespeare.